You, you either love the idea of trying to make a twin-cylinder air-cooled engine that is based on an old 1923 knocker go like the clappers, or you done t. Quote, you, if you done t. Life is simple, you buy a fire blade or an R1 and go zooming about. If you do you kiss goodbye to normality and sign up to the fringes of mainstream motorcycling. Driven by an irrational need to ride a bike that makes it speed the hard way. You, in the case of the BMW Boxer that speed must come from this 90-year-old design. Which, compared to the near-weightless internals of modern superbike engine, reciprocates with the urgency of Stevenson's rocket. Quote, you being a BMW that engine must also be mounted in a rolling chassis that is fundamentally designed for touring. You so when in 2007 BMW wheeled out its most daring boxer ever to compete against the 190 bhp Japanese superbikes in the World Endurance Championship. It was almost too much for followers of air-cooled BMWs. You, the HP2 elevated the old twins to a new level of willful contrariness. It was radical, yes, beautiful too, and dripping in carbon and XD6 lens, but still only a pair of heated grips short of an R1200RT. XA0, U, touring style telelever front suspension and clunky. Power sapping shaft drive were just the start of its quirks. U BMW S flat twins, so brilliantly configured for air cooling, also have inherent ground clearance issues that quickly become a limiting factor on track. Quote, U and while the 140 bhp HP2 had by far the most powerful boxer engine yet seen, it was still 60 bhp down on the factory Kawasaki ZX10s and Suzuki GSX-R1000s, and surely on the giddy limit of reliability, would it melt? You, on paper it was hopeless and exactly how Boxer ad acts like it. Here was BMW's most belligerent and 